Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamea's Promo, and today we will be talking about the settings to change immediately the moment you get yourself the Galaxy S20. Now, as you watch this video, you'll notice that the majority of all of these setting changes will work with any other Samsung phone. Now, if you do use Samsung Smart Switch or the Google Data Recovery and you transfer things from your old phone to your new phone, you might notice that some of these setting changes will move along with it, but just to double check, you can still watch this video. Now, if you are brand new here at the channel, of Jimmy is promo and you own a Samsung Galaxy device, make sure you hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for future videos and make sure you hit on that all option so you don't miss out on any future tips and tricks. Now the first setting that I usually change at the very beginning when I first get the phone is I go on the very top, I pull it down twice, head inside of all of the settings and I turn on dark mode. Now there's two reasons why I turn on dark mode. The first reason is because it is a little bit easier on the eyes and the second reason is because it does actually in fact save you a little bit of battery life. The reason why is because the Samsung Samsung phones are AMOLED, which means that anything that shows the color of black just means that each individual LED is turned off, not using any battery. Now, when it's showing off all of this white, bright light color, it is having all of these LEDs turned on, which is again taking a little bit of battery. Now heading over into the second thing I usually change, and that is the ability to pull down the notifications panel or quick settings just by swiping down on the screen. So go anywhere on your home screen, press and hold that is empty, and go into your home screen settings. Now this is where you wanna turn on the swipe down for notification panel. Now the reason why it's getting uh, a little bit better to turn on this setting is because the phones are getting longer and longer and taller, which means that now I have to go, instead of going to the very top to pull down the little bar, I can just swipe down anywhere on the screen. So I can swipe down there, swipe down here, swipe down there. And if you pull it down twice, it's gonna pull up all of your quick settings. The next setting to change is one that's actually very important. You wanna go inside of your contacts application. The moment you get a new phone, it doesn't know where to really store it. So it kind of maybe puts it into the phone storage itself. It doesn't really put it into Google, so it can't really be backed up. So hit on your little menu button on the left-hand side and go to manage contacts. Now through manage contacts, this is where you go to default storage location. So this way it doesn't always have to keep asking and you can see that really nothing is set up here. So I'm gonna put it inside of my Google account. Uh, so this way now, anytime that I add a new phone number, it's always gonna be saved and stored. The next setting I change is I go right back inside of the home screen settings. So again, go anywhere on the screen that is empty, hit on the home screen settings. And then over here, I change the grid for not only the home, but also my app tray. So at the very beginning uh, with stock, it's gonna have a lot of space in between each individual application. So you're gonna add less apps and less widgets to each screen. But I love to go to this largest screen grid so I can have more and more on each page. Uh, and so basically you just wanna move these right on down, put them right where you want them to go. Uh, this way you're gonna have a little bit more room. So you're gonna add more to the, your first page. So you don't have to have really anything on your second. Now the next thing you also wanna do is do that same thing with your application tray here. So you can see, that there's a lot of pages. There's actually three pages and I didn't really download all my applications just yet. So this is where you'd wanna go right back inside of there, go to the app screen. Uh, and so now I'm gonna change it right there. So it's the five by six. Uh, so you're gonna see that even though it is still using three screens, there is one more little small step to do. On the top right hand side, hit on these little more options and go to clean up pages. Now, once you clean up the pages, it's actually gonna put it all into one area instead of spreading them all out. Now, maybe the very next thing that you might wanna do is put these things in order. So after you hit on apply, you're gonna to go to the very top, hit on sort. We're gonna put it in alphabetical order and now everything just makes sense. So these are the first few things you wanna do the moment you get your phone. The next setting to change is how you navigate the phone. So if you like these icons here, here's your recents, home and back. Or if you wanna use the brand new Android 10 gestures, just go inside of your settings, hit on display. Then as you scroll down, you're gonna see where it says navigation bar. Now, if you're left-handed, you might do this option here. So your back button is a little bit closer to your hand that is dominant or you can put it on your right hand. Now for me, I love the full screen gestures that is a part of Android 10. I love the fact that I can just go anywhere on the bottom and when I swipe up, it takes me right back home. Let's say I was inside of a web page or I was inside of an application. If I wanna go back, I can simply just swipe either onto the screen, either from the right side or even from the left side, but really use any navigation that works best for you. 
The next setting to change, this one's primarily really only for the Galaxy S20 and any other phone after this, and that is by going back inside of your display settings and then changing how smooth you want your motion. So do you want it to be at the 60 hertz or the 120 hertz? Uh, you can have regular standard refresh rate if you want it there. It will actually save a little bit of battery. Uh, but if you want to keep it on that really smooth, you know, transition, that smooth scrolling, the smooth gameplay, then you can put it right back on that 120 hertz. Now, when it comes to this one, when you have the 120 hertz, it kind of de defines if you're using your screen resolution, either at the Full HD Plus or the WQHD Plus. If you put it at the WQHD Plus, you only have the option of the 60 hertz refresh rate. But if you want to have both, you can put it at the Full HD Plus. Again, uh, 60 hertz hertz at full hd plus will give you the best battery life out of all of them uh, but i mean i'm happy with the full hd plus and 120. the next setting to change is dealing with your button over here it's as of right now a multi-purpose button it's either bixby or the power uh, when you do a press and hold right out of the box it will be going inside of bixby an easy way to change this is by pulling down the notifications panel going inside of your power little uh, menu and then hit on this side key settings now inside of here, this is where you can put in power off menu. So this way it's something that you might be used to. If you're using this more as a power button than a Bixby button, this is your setup. So you have your menu right there again. Uh, since we're inside of this little menu here, you also have the option for double press. You can either have it on or off. Uh, if you want it to be on, you can usually have it as quick camera launch, which is by stock and probably the best thing to do. Other than that, you can actually have it open any other application that you have downloaded on your phone, but I'm gonna keep it as the camera. So instead of me trying to uh, go into the camera, do whatever I'm doing, uh, even if the screen is off, a fast double press of the power button will now open up the camera. The next setting to change is dealing with your quick settings on the very top. So this is meant to be quick settings, things that you wanna change on the fly, stuff that you use all the time. So you wanna pull this down twice, click on your more options on the top and then hit on button order. Now inside of the button order, you can move things to the top if you don't want to use them at all, uh, or you can actually move them where you need them to go. So let's say Samsung Kids, that's one that I don't really use as often. We're gonna move it over there. Uh, dark mode, honestly, the moment it's on, I don't need to turn it off, but I'm gonna put it right there because I know it's the second to last one. Uh, so if I do need to change it, I can change it immediately. With the music share, this is something that I do want to use. So I'm gonna put it right up over there. Uh, same thing with you know Dolby Atmos. Uh, quick share is also something I want to use. And you can see that I'm putting them right there. Uh, and it's because what's going to happen is that any time that I take any of these that I don't really need to use and I move them over, they will take over the spot over here. So for example, power mode, I don't need to have power mode over there. So I'm going to put it towards the back again uh, before dark mode. And you can see that music share already moved over. So smart view, this will be something that I'll move over put it in front of dark mode, uh, location. I mean, the moment that's already on, I'm gonna move it over there. Uh, and so now you can see that all three of those I wanted to move over here is already now sitting here. Now, once you have everything set up in the way that you want, so you have your Wi-Fi, your uh, vibrate, sound, silent, your Bluetooth connections, auto rotate, Dolby Atmos, you have all of these set up, you just hit on done. So now what's great about this is when you swipe down the first six little settings you see on the very top is gonna be probably the ones that you toggle the most. Uh, when you pull it down, you can have everything that you really technically use or need to change on a daily or weekly basis. Then everything over here is something that's already set up. You might not use it even monthly or yearly. The next settings to change is gonna be inside of your camera. So when you first open this up, a few things might pop up because you've never used it before. I don't need my location tags. I don't need to have you know location based with that. Now, if you're somebody else who takes pictures for a job, you might wanna have your location on so you knew exactly where you took the picture. But inside of here, you wanna go through and change your modes. So you wanna head over into more, hit on that little edit button, and then this is where you can drag and drop and move things where you want them to go. So live focus is something that I love to use, so I'm gonna bring it on down. And then once you have all of your shooting modes in the order that you would like, put it over into photo. And now that we're still inside of the camera, on the top left-hand side, go inside of your settings. And one of the things I would highly suggest to actually toggle off is gonna be pictures as previewed. The reason why is because if you have it toggled on, what's gonna happen is that if you're wearing anything with words or lettering, it's gonna be completely backwards. So it actually mirrors everything you're doing because it's, it's saving it as previewed on your phone. So when you actually turn this off, if you're wearing something that says Nike or Adidas, it's actually gonna be able to be read uh, Nike 
and Adidas instead of it being backwards. Since we're still inside of the camera, the next setting to change is really gonna be a personal preference, but for me, I like to switch it over to the 16 by nine. If you're taking pictures that's meant for literally Instagram or Twitter, keep it on the ratio of three by four. But because I like to have a full image, you know, something that's set up like a regular TV screen or a monitor or even cell phone, I switch it over into nine by 16. Now it's still inside of the photo. When you switch it over to the front facing, you have to switch it there as well. So again, I'm gonna go to the very top, nine by 16, uh, head back over into the regular photo. When you go inside of video, this is where you can do the exact same thing. Uh, mine is set up as the nine by 16 already. Uh, again, set up like a regular monitor, uh, but if you wanna switch yours over into 8K or whatever shooting mode you want to be there. Uh, same thing with photo, when you actually click on this little option here, instead of nine by 16, this is where you can put it as that 108 megapixel, or if you have the smaller Galaxy S20, it'll be that 64 megapixels. The next setting that we're gonna change, we're gonna do it right now because the screen timeout is starting to bother me as I shoot videos. Uh, I hate having to touch the screen to illuminate it again. Uh, I always like to have mine, even if I wasn't shooting videos. Uh, personally, I like to have mine set up for about either two or five minutes for a timeout. Uh, 30 seconds seems to be pretty quick for me. So I'm going to move it over into five minutes. Uh, again, how, all you'd have to do for that setting is going inside of the settings. You can go inside of your display. Then as you scroll on down, you change the screen timeout to five minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you want it, uh, whatever suits your needs the best. But 30 minutes, is really fast. Now, since we're looking at this home screen here, you can see that this, this weather widget is just sitting right there. Uh, the moment you get your brand new phone, make sure that your locations is turned on and then you set it to your location. So this way it doesn't just say regular weather there. Uh, now it can actually show something for your local area. If you don't want it, you can press and hold and you can actually remove it from your home screen. And you can also make it a little bit smaller. Uh, again, set it really anywhere that you want it to go. Uh, and you can do the same thing here with your Google search bar. And so as you hit there, you can actually make it smaller uh, and you can bring it down. And so now it's gonna be something that maybe makes a little bit more sense for your setup. The next setting to change is one that you could have done a little bit earlier on when you're putting all of these little quick settings in order, but make sure you do have Dolby Atmos turned on so you get the best sound quality. Uh, and if you tap on the words below, you can put it as auto. So this way it'll automatically change uh, if you're listening to audiobook, YouTube, or music, and it'll make it a change for you automatically. So now that we've done a lot of the customizing personalizations of the phone, let's kind of go through the security. I already have both of these set up, so I'm just gonna show you where they are. Go inside of the settings, scroll down to where it says biometrics and security. Now inside of here, make sure you choose on face recognition and fingerprints. Uh, with face recognition, you can also put in an alternate look. So if you are somebody, let's say you're a guy, a lot of times you like to wear a hat and sunglasses, you can set up your face recognition with all of that off. And then maybe with the very next setup, you can do set up alternate look and then you can put in your uh, hat and sunglasses. For fingerprints, you could put in your right thumb and your left thumb uh, and just kind of have all of that set up. And then once you have all of that set up, we're still inside of the screen, make sure you turn on Find My Mobile. Uh, and once this one is turned on, you do have to make sure you're signed in with your Samsung account. And anytime that you lose your phone, you can't locate it, maybe it's inside your house, you don't know where it is, it's on vibrate, you can't ring it, you don't have your smartwatch that's connected. Uh, once you go into the findmymobile.samsung.com, when you log in with your Samsung account, that gives you all the credentials to do everything you need to do with your phone. So let's say that you forget got your lock screen password, you can automatically unlock it. Uh, it's really nice, so I need to put in my pin here just to turn this on. So this way, if I do forget my password or somebody puts a password on my phone, I can't get into it because I know what my Samsung account login is, I'd be able to remotely unlock it. Uh, and you do wanna turn on the send last location, which means once it goes down to a certain battery percentage, it's gonna send it where it last was. So then hopefully if it's outside, you'd be able to find it. Uh, but again, you can locate your phone if it's lost, stolen. Uh, you'd also be able to remotely unlock it. You can wipe it. You can look at your call log. You can look at text messages. If someone was using your phone, you can see all that stuff. Uh, so Find My Mobile is super, super important. So we're almost done. There is two last things I wanna talk about, and that's gonna be with your edge panel, the edge screens. Uh, these are things that are just super helpful. These are little tools that you might use on a daily basis. You can go inside of your quick settings here, or you can just go inside of your settings, go inside of display. And as you scroll down, just head over into edge screen. And once you open up edge screen, make sure you have it turned on. This is also where you can turn on your edge lighting. 
but once this is turned on, you can also change the order of how these are sitting. Uh, so if you wanted your tools to come a little bit before your, your smart select, you can do that. But again, just make sure you have this one at least turned on. It's a lot of really helpful tools. And then the very last thing, which you can do this first if you want to, really these things are not in order, but if you're still here, uh, one of the things you might wanna do is go inside of your settings, go all the way to the bottom and check for any type of software update. Uh, so if there's any type of an update, then you know you're running your last update. So you can do this even first thing out of the box, but I usually kind of personalize and customize my phone. I set up the settings and then I just usually after that, I check for an update. So these are the things that I would highly suggest to change the moment you get yourself the Samsung Galaxy S20 or really any other Samsung phone. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.